Welcome to my unboxing and first look at the Corsair H80i. So this is the replacement for the Corsair H80, which is different from the H80i in a couple of key ways. So number one is that the H80 is completely eyeless. It has no eyes. Wow, worst joke ever, right? But that's what makes this channel great. Yes. Okay, moving right along. What is the key difference between the H80i and the H80? Number one, Corsair Link. So Corsair Link is a software feature that Corsair has built in to the hardware that allows you to do all kinds of cool stuff, like monitoring your uh, coolant temperatures, changing your fan speed, cool, cool stuff. And if you have other Corsair components, like their AX1200i, for example, power supply, then you can monitor all kinds of other stuff, like you can monitor your power supply temperature, your rails, all kinds of neat stuff with Corsair Link. Fans, if you have the Corsair Link module, you can monitor and control your fans, set fan control curves. Quick start guide shows you how to do a bunch of cool stuff, like mounting it to things. Okay, That's important. If you don't mount this to your CPU, this product will be useless to you. It is compatible with both Intel and AMD, and it has a lot of plastic inside. This stuff will kill your baby, and there is a warning all over it. Plastic bags are not toys. Corsair believes in not killing babies. This message was brought to you by Corsair. Or something. Okay, this is just a bad unboxing so far, so don't worry, I'm going to clean it up. Um, the next cool thing about the H80i... <coughs> the next cool thing about the H80i is the inclusion of a way better mounting mechanism for switching between Intel and AMD. So check this out. All you got to do is you want to go, oh, yeah, I want to put like some Intel CPUs in my system. And, uh, you know, you just kind of go like this, and you're all like, okay, I'm making this look harder than it is at this point in time. There you go. What bam Oh, it's because of the plastic here. There you go. So it's magnetic. You take the Intel retention thing, you put it on there, boom, done. You want to be like, oh, shoot, no, 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 I, I got an AMD CPU. My bad, my bad. Bam, AMD. Done. No problem. Magnetic. Very cool. Very easy to hold things in place. So you don't. I mean, remember the oh, guys. Do you remember the original H70, the mounting mechanism on that thing, where you had to like hold the thing on the back and position the thing just right and have the little things in the little grooves, and then you had to like have a third arm coming out of your shoulder to like screw in the screwdriver. No, no, no. We're done with that. Magnetic mounting. Easy backplate. All the hardware you need is included here, and it's very stylish looking hardware, I might say. Check out these thumb screws. Those are just gorgeous. See, these are the little nice finishing touches that I appreciate. Um, LGA 2011 compatibility is provided by this, these pieces right here, and then all the other sockets are dealt with with the backplate, which has adjustable uh, width right here, so you can do 775, 1155, 1156, and 1366. No big deal. And then AMD is with a couple loops and a couple thumb screws. It's, you know, it's complicated. You guys wouldn't understand. Don't worry about it. Uh, the third key thing about the H80. Oh, this is cool. Look at that. I think they, uh, I think they increased the uh, or decreased the FPI, the density. Looks like it. Okay. So this is a much more silence optimized radiator. Assuming I'm not completely incorrect and in talking out of my, you know, that thing. Um, it looks like this is a much more silence optimized radiator, which means performance shouldn't suffer much at all because as long as you got a nice thick 120 mil radiator, they're all going to perform pretty close once you start pumping some airflow through them. And once you get down to lower RPMs on your fans, this will pull itself away from a denser 120 millimeter radiator. So I said the radiator was a thicker style radiator. This will perform significantly better than something like an H60 or an H50, which has that thin radiator. In fact, most of the pre-done water coolers on the market use thin rads because they do offer better compatibility However, the drawback for them is that they do not perform as well, okay? Speaking of performance, Corsair has upgraded the coolant pipes from one quarter inch to three eighths inch, and they have kept these swiveling mounts right here, which give you lots of flexibility in terms of where you want to sort of route the tubes and how you want to do that. Um, and you can twist these up as much as you want. Will not kink. Awesome, awesome stuff. Love to see that. So the finish on it has also changed a little bit as well. Also changed as well. That's totally redundant. That's totally redundant. That's totally redundant. 
That's Cob no, I'm just kidding. Okay. See, Slick called me on it. He, he brought the camera up here. I could have gotten away with it for a couple more if he hadn't done that. Okay, so on the unit itself, the Corsair Link module is inside here, all, as well as the pump and the CPU block. So you can see the copper base, so there's spins in there and stuff. Pre-applied high-quality thermal compound. And here, we have a couple of different things. So we've got some cables for this, so I can show you guys. Check this out. So there's a USB connector that plugs into your motherboard. That is how your cooler interfaces with your computer, and that is how the software controls everything. Next, we've got this guy right here, which is a breakout cable, so you can plug in both of the fans that you want to... Wait, hold on. Let's flip it. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So those guys plug in here, and you can actually get an additional one if you want. You can plug in additional fans, should you so desire. But it comes with two of Corsair's new style fans. So I'll do that right there. So you can plug in up to two four-pin PWM fans without any additional hoopla going on. The last thing that is a major improvement over the original H80 is these fans. Now these are slightly downgraded versions of Corsair's... Yeah, I can't find one, but here's a box. You'll have to sort of imagine that there's an SP120 in there. See? There's a sort of... You know what? I can find one. There, I found one. Okay. Nope, wrong one. There, I found one. Not wrong one. You gotta be kidding me here. Where are my SP120s? Slick? Did you take them? Okay, there's an SP120. Okay, so SP120s have color change rings around them. They come with a few different rings. They have rubber mounts up here. See, the full like corner is filled with rubber. And I think that's pretty much the only key difference because the blade design is what's most important about a fan. So these are slightly costed down because they don't have the rubber and they don't have the interchangeable blades, but these are way better fans than what have been included on previous generation Corsair liquid cooling products. They're awesome and you should use them in push-pull on your H80 as long as you have enough room in your chassis. Otherwise, you can just use one. They are pressure-optimized fans, so you don't have to worry about cranking up the RPMs in order to get great performance out of your liquid cooling unit. And that's pretty much it. What else is there to say about it? So, in summary, Corsair Link, better fans, well-designed radiator, and thicker tubes, and I guess that's actually, oh yeah, and the easier retention mechanism. I think that is enough that they probably could have called it an H85 or an H90 if they'd really wanted to, but who knows, maybe they're you know, saving that for something even more impressive. Either way, thanks for checking out my unboxing of the H80i from Corsair. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.